okay? Uh, now, one of these things that's really cool that I want to talk about next is this thing called proprioception. Uh, Monday, Wednesday class, you didn't get to hear this, so here's your new part for Monday, Wednesday. Uh, proprioceptors are these specialized units within our muscle fibers. Okay, now one of the main jobs of proprioceptors is to keep us safe. So go back to the whole thing with the all or none. Go back to the example of the falling off the potty. Go back <coughs> to the example of Stan pulling the door. That's an example of when all or none or our proprioceptors got messed up. So stand up for a second. All right, now I want some of you to come up here with me to be in the camera shot. Don't all volunteer at once. Okay, so everyone's going to play. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to stand on your right foot and balance. Okay, so pick your left foot up. Awesome. Pretty good. Now close your eyes. And it looks like the wind started blowing in the room. <laughs> nice. Okay, other side. Now this should be better because you're, you have kind of plugged in to your proprioceptors. Okay, stand there. Your body knows where it is in space. It's making visual contact. You're receiving information all over the place. Close your eyes. Still pretty shaky. Hey, thanks guys. Okay, so what we know is proprioceptors are always sending us these signals about what we have going on. And in this process of sending these signals, two things are helping us to stay safe. Muscle spindles are proprioceptors that run along the length of the muscle. It's almost like they're just going back and forth and back and forth. So when you think about those muscle spindles and this balance thing, when you lost your balance, your muscle spindles all of a sudden said, oh, that quad is stretching, that quad is stretching, I'm gonna take care of it. She didn't go too far, we're still okay. We're still okay, we're still okay. Now, all of a sudden, after muscle spindles have been stretched to their most to keep things safe, they pass the baton off to these things called Golgi tendon organs, and that's on page 12. Golgi tendon organs jump in after muscle spindles to prevent us from hurting ourselves really bad. Okay, so let's go back to the balance example. I'm here balancing. I close my eyes, I wiggle a little bit, muscle spindles are saying okay. All of a sudden I start to fall. Golgi tendons are like, she's about to go. But if I go past my Golgi tendon organs, but this foot is still planted, all of a sudden I'm going to tear up a knee, tear up a quad, do something. So muscle spindles and Golgi tendon organs are these proprioceptors that are running the length of our muscles, stopping us before we hurt ourselves. So what happens when we blow beyond our muscle spindles and Golgi tendon organs? You get hurt. You get hurt. You end up with an orthopedic surgeon or something going on. Okay, let me ask you a question. Ever been to a carnival and you get on that thing where you get strapped in and it's spinning this way and it's spinning this way and it's spinning this way on one of those gyrospheres? and you get off of it and you're like, Whoa. played the spinny back game. Okay, you stand up and you don't know where you are. That's jacking with your muscle spindles and your Golgi tendon organs. They don't know what to do to keep you safe anymore. So we really don't want to jack with our muscle spindles and our Golgi tendon organs because they're our safety net to keep us upright where we need to be. Say so got it when you got it? Okay. I want to hit a few things. Hey, at the top of page 12, we actually see different ways that athletes can increase force production. I need for you to know about those things. They will actually make perfect sense to you when you think about what we have talked about right here. 
Now, a couple things about the heart. <clears throat> I need for you to know what your SA note is. That's your body's intrinsic pacemaker. I need for you to know about your AV node. This is where the impulse is slightly delayed before it passes through the ventricles. Okay, come with me again. You guys, we're totally hitting the high spots on this. We have an entire class about EKGs, if you want that. I do want you to know that the test that we administer as professionals to determine heart rhythm is actually called an ECG or an EKG. I'll take either answer there, okay? So pretty basic about the heart. Um, I do want you to understand that there are these beautiful things connected to the heart that are called arteries. Their primary job is to carry blood, oxygenated blood, away from the heart to move through and saturate the tissues. Say got it when you got it. Yeah. See, I already knew that. Yeah. All right. So now, I want you to think about your capillaries differently than you have ever thought about them before. I think people underestimate the power of the capillary. The power of the? The power of the capillary. Now, because I like for you to remember things in silly ways, I want you to think about a capillary like a frat party. Okay? So it's actually a capillary or a kappa party. Laugh. Okay. Think about it. It's going to make sense. Okay? Whenever we see functions of capillaries, check it out. We exchange oxygen, fluids, nutrients, electrolytes, hormones, and other substances. Kind of sounds like a frat party, doesn't it? Think about all, there's beer, there's food, there's all kinds of stuff going on with exchanging all kinds of stuff. Don't underestimate the power of the capillary. That's what keeps us nice and cleaned up. So much goes on right there. Then after things have gotten cleaned up in the capillaries, we see things make their way back to the heart via the veins to where all of a sudden they're going back through, they need to be resaturated with oxygen. And when they're resaturated with oxygen, that's when we see this rich something, this rich product called hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is that oxygen rich portion of the brain, of the, of the blood cells, excuse me. So then when we think about those red blood cells, this is a major component of the blood. It contains <coughs> large, quantities of carbonic anhydrase, which catalyzes the reaction between carbon dioxide and oxygen. It's a huge balancing <coughs> act there. Okay, now as far as the respiratory system, just a few more things. We have our first generation, generation pathway known as your trachea. I'm on page 15. Then you divide into a right and a left bronchial. So you got it when you got it, you already know this, okay? Then, after you make your way down through the alveoli, to get to the alveoli, do you realize after your right and left bronchioles, you gotta go through 23 different passageways. Do y'all ever go to like a corn maze? And you're like, oh, that doesn't work. Oh, that doesn't work. You gotta keep going to get there so we can get to the alveoli to make sure that exchange gets resaturated and used in the body. 23 different passageways, <coughs> okay? And as that takes place, we have this process called diffusion. And diffusion is the process of molecules moving in opposite directions. <coughs> to keep our partial pressure, the process of diffusion takes place deep in those lungs. That's a lot. How many of you are happy that you're gonna have it on video to listen to again? Yes. All right, <laughs> study hard, God bless you. I will see you next week for show off day.